Hey, what's cracking, dog pal? Hey, so it's been a minute since I had a really good steak. So I thought today I'd try to do a reverse seared ribeye steak. So what I got here is steak. Y'all ready? Let's get it. So uh, what I got here is I got a big old uh, <laughs> massive, massive ribeye from uh, my local Costco, and I got some uh, New York strips. That's some New York strips for the kids. I'm not putting them on this uh, big old ribeye, man. Come on. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna get these steaks put on the grill so they can get a little smoke to them. I'm gonna smoke them up to about 110 and then finish them off. I'm trying to get them off the grill around 125, 128, somewhere around in there. Look at this ribeye. Come on, man. <laughs> so, anyway, we're gonna put this on here. I'm, I'm burning with some uh, hickory wood today. Uh, I like that hickory sweetness. So, Got a little hickory going right now, and uh, like I said, we're gonna smoke this bad boy up to about 110 or so, and then we're gonna get to the good stuff, all right? All right, guys, so what is reverse sear? Some of you guys might not know, a lot of you guys might already know, so we're gonna talk about it. So, reverse searing is the opposite of what you usually think of when it comes to grilled steak. Most of the time, people get their grill screaming hot, and then they go put their steak on, and they sear it because the thought is, oh, if I sear it really hot and fast, that I lock in all the juices. Well, this is the opposite. Basically, you put this on the pit, and you bring it up slow temperature. You're going to do all the slow cooking on the front end, and then you're going to crank up the grill and do that high heat searing at the end, so it's called a reverse sear. Hope that helps. Alright guys, so we're back at the pit. Time to check the temp. If we're about 80 degrees or so, I'll flip it over so we can get a good even uh, you know, smoke on the uh, front side of this uh, reverse sear. So let's take a look. So I think I'm going to go ahead and flip these guys over. Might as well, right? Alright, so we got a flip and we're going to put the lid on and keep rolling smoke. So, how do you guys like your steaks? Do y'all like reverse sear or do you like to just do the straight sear? Put in the comments below. And while we're talking about things like this, uh, you know, hey, if you like this video, make sure you hit that uh, like button for me. And if you're not a part of the uh, dog pound, down there, wait, down there in that corner, you'll see my logo. Click on the logo and subscribe. Become part of the dog pound. That keeps you up to date on all the videos that uh, I produce and put on my channel. Hey, all right, guys, so it's time to check our temperature on our big, thick ribeye again. So if we hit 110 or so, it'll be time to pull it off. So let's, uh, let's take a look. I think we're ready. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull it off. And uh, we're going to get the fire kicked up. We're going to get the grill grates put on. We're going to get the, season, the uh, steaks dried off and seasoned up. And then we'll be ready to do this high heat reverse sear. All right. I'll bring you back in a minute. So what do you guys like to put on your steak? I mean, what seasoning? Do you all straight salt and pepper? SPG? 
Do you have a favorite rub that you like to put on? I mean, let us know. Let's talk about it. Put in those comments down there. Let's get a good chat going. Alrighty guys, so we got our steak over here. And we're ready to basically pat them dry and get them seasoned so we can get them on the grill. Just like to get as much moisture out of this steak as I can before I get ready to put it on here. And then what we're going to do is basically we're just going to go salt and pepper today. I like to pat it in. Get this pepper. And then we'll flip it over and do the same thing. And now we're going to get the uh, behemoth steak here. Look at this big old ribeye here. Same thing, we're going to pat it dry. I did go ahead and butcher twine this one just to kind of hold it together. Promote an even cook as well. So ribeye is seasoned and ready for the grill. So when we kick up the heat and get ready to do this high hot sear on our uh, steak, we're going to use grill grates. Y'all know about grill grates? Grill grates. These things are awesome. Man, they give you great char, give you that those great hash lines on your steak. But uh, <laughs> funny story about how I got these grill grates. Let me show you. So on one of my grills I've got, it's called a M16, it's from M Grills. It's this bad boy right here. It's a nice grill. But if you notice, there's brand new grill grates on this thing. So yeah, I was trying to clean those grill grates and I kind of overheated them and it's aluminum. They melted. So I had to toss one of them and got a, a new set and I decided, well, you know what? Three of them still work fine, so I might as well keep them and use them on my Weber whenever I want to. So that's why I've got them. But if you don't know about grill grates, guys, I'll put a link down there so you can check it out. Awesome to have. Get them. All right, guys, we're going to get our grill grates assembled to get them on the grill so they can start to heat up here. And if you don't have grill grates, they basically have a tongue and groove type thing here. Pop it in together and bam. Basically, these guys can just lay right on top of your grill. And so that's what we're doing. First thing I'm going to do is put a little oil on our grill grates here. Roughly what I'm going to do here is go a minute, turn it, minute, turn it, minute, turn it. So we're going to cook in minute intervals here until we get to our uh, target temperature. So we're going to target a temperature of about 128 degrees. One cool thing about grill grates is when you order a set of grill grates, you get this uh, fancy grill grate tool. Basically it's a big ass spatula that fits in these grooves. Now look at those marks. Give it another little press. And what I typically do when I flip the steak is I clean off the area that the steak just re removed from and reapply some spray. It might be a little overkill, but that's just the way I do things.
All right, we'll get these guys flipped again. Notice that I have my stakes angled this way. So now I'm going to go this way so I can get a diamond pattern. Again, I give it a little press. Right at 120 there. 122 there. And the final flip for this one. Right at 127 there. And 129 there. Alrighty guys, now it's time to get our big ribeye steak on. So here we go. And I think this one we'll do a cross pattern instead of a diamond. So I'm just gonna put it right on here. Again, give it a little press. So the reason I put the lid on is so that I can uh, hopefully retain some temperature and get this steak finished off. I've had the steak off for quite a while and this thing is losing some heat when I grilled those other steaks. So the dome should radiate some heat in there and help get the steak cooked. All right, so we're going to go ahead and turn the steak. And what I'm using as my reference point is I got a little point here on this steak, so I'm going to make sure that point stays facing you. And there we go. And we'll put the lid back on. All right, guys, it's time for us to turn this bad boy. And this time it's going to be a flip. So we're going to lift it. I'm going to brush and clean. I'm going to spray. And again, we reference this point, so that point is going to go 90 degrees off this time. So we're going to turn this way, flip it over. Put the lid back on. Alright guys, I'm going to pop the lid. We're going to check the temperature here. getting there. So, again, we're going to go ahead and flip. And there we go. Look at that. Here we go. 
Pop the lid back on. Let it finish out. Alrighty guys, we're gonna check temperature here. Almost 124. A few more minutes. Alrighty guys, final check here because I'm pretty confident this is going to be ready now. Oh yeah. So it's ready to come off guys. your favorite cut me personally i love ribeye steaks but i ain't gonna frown at a good new york strip this prime cut has got some good fat in it so uh what do you guys like to cook what, what's your favorite cut of steak let's talk about it Alrighty, guys so as you saw it was a fairly simple cook for us I did four new york strip steaks and i also did one big ribeye and we reverse seared them so we smoked them up to about 80 degrees then we flipped them smoked them again up until about 110 then we kicked up the heat, installed our grill grates, and then we got our good sear marks on them. So, if you haven't tried grill grates, you guys have got to try it. This is what grill grates can do for you. Alright, so, I'm going to take this in here and get it cut up. And uh, I guess I'll show you guys what it looks like on the inside. But, before we do that, if you like what you saw here, make sure you hit that like button. And uh, if you aren't a part of my uh, dog pound, then make sure you... Uh, Click that button down there. If you see my logo down there in the bottom left corner, click that. Subscribe. All right? Dog Pound. See ya.